Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at Norton LifeLock and its brand new security product, Norton 360. We will put it through its paces and make it face an onslaught of malware from the wild west of the internet and see how it holds up and whether or not it's able to protect the system. We will also monitor the resource usage so you'll have an idea of how light or heavy it is, especially under stress. And in order to accomplish all of that, we have 1170 random files we've collected in the last couple of days. As mentioned before, this is stuff from the wild west of the internet, so we expect to see PUPs, malware, ransomware, all sorts of threats in here. In order to conduct the test, we're going to use our automation tool Malix, and everything is going to be run from a network location. So we'll navigate over there right now. The location is the shared. So this should simulate a lateral movement type scenario within an organization or a network attack for a home user. We're going to go ahead and run our script via Python. It's essentially going to execute the malware, conduct the test, and give us a proactive detection. Before we go ahead with that, I just want to draw attention to the fact that Norton is fully up to date and ready to go. Just to be sure, I'm going to do another live update. One of the unique things I've noticed about Norton is like every time you do an action, it has this separate window that pops up. Some may like it, some may not. It's a matter of preference. In terms of the GUI, not much has changed in the last couple of years ever since they went with this white UI. It's pretty much stayed the same since then. We'll talk a little bit more about the settings in the later part of this video, but for now, let's get started with the test. We'll open up Task Manager so you can monitor the resource usage move the stuff around a little bit. We will highlight CPU usage so everything is sorted by the apps that are taking up the most CPU so you can see what's going on with Norton there. Everything looks good to go so let the testing begin. As you can see, a lot of stuff is being blocked. AutoProtect says that it is processing threats and our test is running. The proactive detection is sitting at 100%, but this is just the beginning. It will be interesting to see where that number ends up as we get towards the end. Now this is going to take a while, so with the power of editing, we're going to speed it up. Now here's something interesting that I've noticed. A lot of the detections we're getting have the word here in it, so I'm guessing it stands for heuristic. I'm gonna try to read one of these. So for example, this one, I'm guessing is heuristics, advanced machine learning. I guess that's what it means. I could be wrong, but it's just something interesting to look at. If that is indeed the case, I guess they're using their machine learning and the static analysis as a separate engine under heuristics. And the fact that everything is coming under one umbrella and they're just named as different detections, it just shows that um, the engines are quite well integrated. I'm also guessing that if they are using machine learning, a lot of this is being looked up in the cloud. All right, so it looks like our test is complete. That took almost 13 minutes and the CPU usage I think was hovering around like 20%, 20 to 30% for the most part. So that's fairly decent. And now let's look at the number of misses. So we did have a fair number of misses, total of nine, which gives us a final proactive detection of 99.23%. However, in a lot of these cases, the samples did just mention an error. So it's likely that Norton blocked most of these after execution. Remember, the proactive detection refers to the number of threats that were blocked before execution. Now, here's something interesting though. So we have this action required window and it says there were threats detected, which is fine. So we've got all of these, which are risk level high, and we need to perform a restart to get rid of them. But then we have this one threat where it says remove failed and the recommended action is rescan. And if I click on go, well, it doesn't do anything. 
Okay, now it works, but it didn't work during the test and I did this several times. So the fact that there's basic bugs like this that you can find using it for less than a few hours, I find a little bit concerning from a user experience standpoint. I've never really liked this threat window from Norton and the way it reports certain things to the user and that is precisely why. Now we still have a threat which has not been fixed so we'll go ahead and try and fix this one. Now it says it's resolved so that's good. Now we're going to go ahead and close this window. Before we proceed, we're going to close everything out and do a second opinion scan with Hitman Pro. We'll also take a look at our startup items using auto runs to see if there's anything suspicious there at all. So startup wise, it seems we've got this one VBS script that is in C, users, TPSC, app data, roaming. And this is definitely like a malicious item. While I'm doing this, looks like um, Norton has another alert. It says minor JS webcoin has been detected. Risk level is low and status is not attempted. So we've got two options here to exclude or fix. I'm going to go ahead and try to fix because we don't want any malicious miners on the system. I wonder if that had something to do with this VBS script, but we'll go ahead and try to find it anyway. guess I can just copy over the location. And we can just navigate to it. So if we go ahead and try to open this, very interesting. Most of it is in binary. I wonder what happens when we try to run this. It's hard to tell because I don't get any notifications, nothing from Norton. Now let's take a look at the results from Hitman Pro. So it looks like the only threat detected is from the classified folder. But the interesting thing is this is actually active in memory. So one of the process is still running. It's detected by Bitdefender as Trojan Generic. It's likely an obfuscated Trojan downloader, but that's about all I can tell. Now we can go ahead and open Process Explorer, which should give us some more insight into what it possibly is doing. So there you have it. We've got this one process which says it's services and controller app detected by 39 out of 69 in first total. So fairly high number of detections. Ah, so this is the one it failed to remove. So possibly it's just because the process is active and the removal started too late in the process or it was detected after it successfully executed and went to memory. So we'll go ahead and apply all. But you see, this is the problem. It's not even a case where it allows me to say restart the system. It's not like restart to remove. It just says get help, rescan or exclude. And if I click on rescan, it just does nothing and says remove failed again. Not ideal, especially given that I'm pretty sure this is not some advanced rootkit. I can probably just terminate it off of Process Explorer, which I will right now. So if we go ahead and kill Process Tree, hit OK, it's gone. So why is Norton not able to do this is a bit baffling to me. Now we still have a few things running, uh, msbuild.exe, maybe part of some other malware operation. But now we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the settings that I wanted to show you earlier. So if we open up Norton, as you will see, we've got some advanced settings in here, but a lot of these are kind of tied together. So if we go into antivirus, you'll see we have real-time protection and sonar. Now sonar is the advanced behavioral detection system that Norton has that monitors process in real time. Now the problem is they are not very modular. So for example, if you try to turn off the basic file protection, it's automatically going to turn off everything, which is a bit annoying for me because then I can't test something like sonar our specifically or do our typical ransomware test. But we'll go ahead and restart the system. But while we're talking about it, it seems Sonar has popped up. So possibly some of these threats were detected by Sonar, which is why they're active on the system and could not be removed. But even the notification here says Sonar could not remove the risks. Uh, go to the logs and try to remove it manually. Not the best user experience if you ask me. But we'll go ahead and restart the system. And while we do that, we get another error from msbuilt.exe. That's fine. We'll click restart anyway. Hopefully, once we boot back up, our system will be fine. But time will tell. 
Okay, so it looks like we're back in to a black desktop background and we have these desktop.ini files on the... So, you know, some settings have been changed without our consent. Ooh, interesting. So we've got a security request popping up from Norton saying outbound traffic detected that is suspicious. And it seems to realize that our computer may be infected with something that Norton Power Razor can detect and remove. Do you want to run Norton Power Razor? Like, okay, <laughs> but I already have your main security application. Why does it require an additional tool to be used? Why is it just not a part of that? Again, this is not great points from a user experience standpoint. I'm going to go ahead and hit okay so we can see what happens, but it looks like we're still getting threats being detected and blocked. So we've gotten attacked by a backdoor remote access tool. So this is all reactive stuff from Norton. It seems to be detecting the network activity of this uh, backdoor that's probably trying to reach out to its command and control servers. We've also got a PUA, which is a potentially unwanted application. We'll try to remove that. Now, funnily enough, it says still that the Trojan generic MBT could not be removed. So this is interesting. If it survived reboot and is persistent, well, we're in trouble. And once again, this is fully resolved, but this cannot be removed. So no matter what we do, this threat cannot be dealt with by Norton. Now, usually we don't even talk about remediation, but it's interesting to note that even though this threat wasn't prevented by the proactive defenses, it still can even be removed, although it's detected. And this is what I mean when I say it's not a great user experience, because look, it says security request, your system still has unresolved threats. Are you sure you want to close? Well, what am I supposed to do? I only have two options, which is rescan or exclude. And if I click on rescan, it does nothing. So I'm <laughs> stuck in an infinite loop there. Now we'll go ahead and run Norton Power Racer since that is what was recommended. But already at this point, keep in mind, it's kind of not great because our focus is always to test how well a product does proactively, not how it does reactively, as in whether or not it can successfully remove the threats that it let in. So there we have it. Looks like we've got uh, the two VBS scripts and a registry modification detected by Norton Power Razor. Now we're going to go ahead and click on fix now. And it wants another system restart, so we'll go ahead and do that. All right, second restart in. We're still with black desktop. Um, Norton Power Razor says it removed these threats successfully, so we'll click on done. We're also not getting the suspicious activity notification, so it's possible that the threats were actually removed. Now we'll go ahead and do a scan with Hitman Pro, see if anything else is detected. But unfortunately, it seems we're still getting this notification saying that Trojan generic MBT remove failed, access denied, risk high, and action, get help, rescan, exclude. So it seems Norton has broken down. Interestingly, Hitman Pro doesn't seem to be detecting anything more on the system, but then again, Hitman Pro is kind of like a superficial scan. I also did a scan with ADW Cleaner, and it seems to find a registry key um, that's a PUP. So I think we're gonna wrap it up over here. Definitely this is not ideal. I think Norton cleaned up fairly well and the system is in a much better state than it was, I think with the previous restart, but then again, we required Norton Power Razor to do it. So it's far from a clean sheet. It definitely didn't do too bad in terms of the proactive detection, but we did have some threats execute successfully. And even once that it does recognize itself, it cannot remove no matter what. And it keeps giving you this annoying notification. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you are a Norton user, I'd like to hear if this is something you experience on a regular basis where you have notifications that are not actionable and you get stuck in an infinite loop of uh, trying to perform the same action over and over again because the alternatives are, well, not great. Now, funnily enough, we didn't even get to the ransomware test, which I purposefully didn't do because under settings, as you can tell, there's no way for me to disable auto protect without getting to the other stuff. Since as I click on apply, you will see that turning off auto protect will also turn off antivirus, download intelligence, sonar protection, and script control. So pretty much everything it has. 
Another thing to point out that is not ideal is that you can't even get a trial for this product directly. You have to sign up. It's a pretty complicated sign up process and you have to provide your credit card info. And even when you do that, some of the things it does is a little bit sketchy. So for example, it gives you a trial for like 60 days, but it can only be canceled up to 45 days. So if you don't cancel by then, you are automatically going to be rolled into the yearly subscription, which again, just from a marketing perspective is very sketchy. Like if it's a 60 day trial, why does that happen at 45 days and not at 60? Not something I'm a big fan of. But I hope you found this video enjoyable. Hope you learned something. Please like and share if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. We'll be doing a lot more interesting cybersecurity tests in the future. And if you are a business and you'd like to work with us in any way, don't hesitate to reach out. Check out the PCSecurityChannel.com. Feel free to get in touch. And to you, the viewer, thank you so much for watching. Check out some of these other videos. And as always, stay informed. Stay secure.